In this video, we're going to go through the nine steps you'll need to record a professional interview. That's with high quality video and audio, making sure you have redundancy for audio, monitoring the entire process, and preparing your guests to have a great interview. Let's jump into it. Number one, before you set up any gear, you have to choose a good location. Now, if you have a professional studio set up and you can have people come in and record whenever you need, that's great. That's probably where you want to film your interview. But oftentimes you'll have to go on site, maybe into different homes, different businesses, and set up for the interview. An important part of the process is scouting locations. See what rooms are available, listen to the sound in each room. Is it a large room that might be too echoey? Is the room kind of busy and has a lot of distracting things that won't look great in the background? Or should you record outside? Recording outside has its own challenges. We have a whole video actually on how to record outdoors both audio and video. You can check that out above or in the description. But are there lots of windows that you'll have to control if the sun moves throughout the day? Will that change the lighting inside the room? And look for rooms that have significant depth and have a nice background. That longer depth will give you a nice bokeh or blurred background effect so your interview guest will be nice and crisp and the background will be slightly blurred. Number two, think about composition. Where will your interview subject sit or stand and then how will you frame the shot? Often you'll want to use the rule of thirds when setting up the shot for an interview guest. We have an entire video about interviews and rules of thirds. We'll link it above and in the description. But as you look at your framing, think about the rule of thirds and where you'll want to place the subject's face. You want to have them on one of those cross sections or cross hairs in that rule of thirds. If you have two subjects talking to each other, make sure you place one on the left side of the frame and the other on the right side of the frame so it looks like they're actually talking to each other or looking at each other during the interview. Typically, you want to reserve this center shot when you have a talking head video or it's not really an interview. It's just a single person looking into the camera and talking like I am right now. For those interviews, think about the rule of thirds. Place your subject on one side of the frame or the other. Number three, if you have access to multiple lenses, you should use that to your advantage when setting up multiple camera shots. Now, if you're filming with just mobile devices, there's actually a whole different strategy for that. And we have a whole video on recording a professional interview with just mobile devices and the Riverside app. Check that video out above or in the description. When choosing lenses, your main lens or A camera would hopefully have a low f-stop. That means you can really open that aperture, let in a lot of light, and give you that nice bokeh or blurred background. When looking at lenses, you can look for anything 2.4, 2.8 or lower. Like this is a f1.4 lens, so you'll have that nice blurry background and lets in plenty of light. If you're actually setting up a second camera for a closer shot of your subject, try to choose a 50 millimeter, 70 or higher. Those kind of close-up shots might actually start getting distorted if you're using a lens like 35 millimeter or lower. So in general, think wider angle lens, low aperture for your A shot or camera one shot, higher aperture and more zoom lens for that B-roll camera shot that's getting up close to your subject's face. Step number four, and this is the big one, getting the lighting right on your interview subject. You'll wanna have a three-point lighting setup. We have several videos on pro lighting and that three-point lighting setup with your key light, fill light, and hair light. We'll link that above or in the description. When filming an interview though, you wanna have that nice soft key light set off to the side, maybe about a 45 degree angle from your subject, and it might actually be nicer to film on the darker side of the face. It has a little bit more of a dramatic effect, really contours the face, and then your second light, your fill light, will actually be on the opposite side of your subject, filling in some of that shadow. Just to give you an idea, I'm actually gonna turn off the fill light I have off to my side. You'll see how this side of my face got a little darker and it's definitely moody, but for most interviews, that's probably not the look you're going for. So adding that fill light back on the face can even out the look and gives you a nice pleasing angle from your A-roll shot. Ideally, you'll also have a background or hair light that's behind your subject pointed downward at their head that will help separate them from their background and start distinguishing their hairline. You'll see mine behind me up above. I'll turn it off for a moment. You'll see that definition gets lost around my head and I have a little less separation from the background. If I turn it back on, you'll see my hairline is now a little bit more lit up and I'm separated from the background. So you really wanna try and get that three point lighting set up for your interview guest. Again, we'll link to several videos in the description to help you set up your pro lighting. Number five, this is almost more critical than good lighting is good audio for your interview. Most of the time an interview will just consist of a subject speaking off camera and then you'll roll B-roll over that or other video clips. And so the audio is actually all that's telling the story. For a professional interview setup, I would recommend a shotgun microphone. There's lots of different options here. This is actually the Sennheiser MKE 600. It's about a $400 microphone, but you could set this up on a boom stand right off camera and you'll get great audio from your subject. An even higher end option is the Sennheiser MKH 416. It's actually what I'm recording with right now. It's slightly off camera. I'll bring it into the frame so you can see it. But this kind of microphone, again, will get great audio and it can be just out of frame to give your interview a really clean look. Now, many times you'll often have your interview subject for just that one recording session. If audio was damaged or didn't record properly, it will be difficult to get that interview guest back, sometimes impossible. 
So one of the things when recording an interview is using redundant audio, meaning record with that shotgun microphone into your audio interface, but also use something like a lavalier or lapel mic. These can be very discreet, clipped on the subject's clothing, and it will provide a secondary audio source that you can use just in case anything happens to the main audio. And before you jump into the questions for your interview, make sure you test your audio and your video recordings. Run a quick 30 second test, have your interview guests say a few lines, listen back to the recording to make sure everything sounds good, and then you're ready to jump into the interview. Number six, while you can't control everything about the environment most times, you can bring some audio treatment with you to make sure you get that high quality audio. This can be sound panels, sound blankets, foam squares, lots of different options. We'll put some links in the video description. One of my favorite methods is actually getting a couple inexpensive stands on Amazon and using moving blankets, which again, pretty inexpensive, and you can hang those moving blankets around your subject, of course, out of the camera frame, and that will actually do a lot to minimize the echo and the reverb of the room. If the room you're in also has hard floors or tile, you might wanna bring a blanket or rug with you and put that down in front of the guest. That will also help with reducing the echo and reverb. Number seven, before you start filming, double check all of your camera settings. Check the white balance on your camera. Make sure that it matches your key, hair, and fill light, whatever Kelvin setting you have that at, maybe it's 4100 or 5600. Just make sure your camera matches your lights. Depending on the camera you're using, you might wanna rely on autofocus. Right here, I'm using a Sony a7 IV mirrorless camera, and it actually does an incredible job at eye tracking and keeping the subject in focus. If I move closer to the camera, or move farther away, it will keep me in focus and would keep your interview subject in focus as well. If you're hesitant or unsure about the autofocus of your camera, then definitely set your lens to a manual focus. Make sure your subject is crystal clear, adjusting that focus manually. Try to have a large preview monitor so you can double check, make sure that they're in focus. And you'll need to remain aware if they move forward or backwards in the frame. When you're set on manual focus, if they move too far away or too close, then they'll be out of focus because the camera focus is not changing. If you're struggling with a subject moving in and out of focus, maybe have them seated, tell them to stay in the chair, you can mark it down on the floor, and then you'll know your manual focus setting will be steady throughout the interview. Number eight, while you record your interview, make sure to monitor everything. If you have multiple people on your crew, have someone monitoring and listening to the audio as it's being recorded, someone else keeping an eye on every camera, making sure it's actually recording, focus is good, white balance is good, there's no auto settings changing throughout the interview. And you might have someone else actually conducting the interview and asking the questions. But if you're a one person show and have to do everything, try to situate yourself where you can keep an eye on all of those meters and gauges. See each camera that's actually recording. If you are monitoring the audio, make sure you do wear headphones plugged into whatever device you're using to record. And if you're actually asking the interview questions, sit behind the camera and a little off to the side and have the subject look at you. That slightly off camera look from the interview guest is typical in that kind of video. Finally, number nine, make sure you've prepared your interview guest, sent them some questions or context ahead of time so they know how to prepare their answer and be listening to their answers as you conduct the interview. They might say something interesting or trigger another idea in your mind as you're recording and only if you're actively listening will you be able to jump to a different topic or follow a trail that they've started and you might get some great content and really interesting facts from your interview guest by actively listening and following the conversation, not just reading from the script. So those are our nine steps to recording a pro interview. If you're gonna record an interview with just mobile devices, again, check out this video above or in the description, and using Riverside to record your video content makes all of this way easier. And if you subscribe to the Riverside channel, we have lots of content on how to build a video podcast setup, how to set up that three-point lighting, and even the best USB mics if you're just getting started. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.